my name is Victoria and this is the first of what I'm hoping will be a series of videos on how to use a Nexus 7 tablet. I just got a brand new Nexus 7 and I've been struggling to learn how to use it, especially because I'm used to my iPad and they're organized very differently. This little padlock, if you just pull it out of the circle, is how you unlock it when you first get it. The default lock is the little padlock, and they don't really tell you how to unlock it. It's not that hard. If you tap it a bunch of times, it will just kind of bounce out of the circle. But I found that the first thing that was confusing was I wasn't exactly sure how to unlock it. There are a bunch of other locks on here that you can also put in. Um, there's a face lock, there's one that you can do, draw kind of a pattern, a bunch of other cool ways of locking it. But the default one is the little paddle lock, and it's helpful to know how to unlock it when you first get it. The second thing that I found really confusing was just kind of the whole organizational structure of the Nexus, and I guess Androids in general. I was so used to iOS and iPad types of devices that I was pretty married to their organizational system. So as you can see, this is the home screen on the iPad, and once you get enough apps, you end up creating additional home screens, if you will. And if you can see along the bottom, those little dots, those show you where, it's kind of like a table of contents, where within your screens you actually are. And initially, when you start out, you really only have apps on the first page or the main home screen. With the Nexus, when you first get it, you really don't have a home screen. You really need to set that up to begin with. So I'm gonna start out with explaining these little icons down here. The middle one that looks like an envelope is the most important one. When you tap that, it brings you to your home screen, assuming that you have one set up. The little arrow pointing to the left is a back, back button, so it will just bring you to the last previous screen that you were on. And the one that has the double rectangles if you tap that one, it will bring you to a scrolling list of the most current apps that you've used or the apps that are currently running right now. And when you tap the little envelope, it brings you back to the home screen again. There's a little piece of fuzz there that's bothering me. Okay, so how do you make the home screen? Well, when you get the Nexus 7, you get an app landing page. And there are all these apps that come pre-installed on the Nexus 7. And then you pick and choose which apps you actually want to put on your home screen. They show you how to do that, but they never really explain that this, in fact, is not a home screen. It's really an app landing page. And when you purchase new apps, this is where they show up. And then you take one and drag it onto one of your home screens. Also, Whereas the iPad, the screens are lined up in a row. With the Nexus, there are essentially five home screens. Your main one is in the center, and then there are two to the left and two to the right. I haven't used most of them yet because I don't have that many apps yet. Uh, this is a little um, app called HD Widgets, and I set this up with the intention of probably I'm going to be soon putting apps onto a second page. But for right now, this is all the apps I have. Although I do have them organized into folders similar to like with the iPad. Although I think on the iPad the folders are more obvious. But for example, if you tap the video watching one, you can see that there's actually five apps that are in that particular folder. So. You need to get a bunch of apps when you first get it, in addition to the ones that are just loaded here on the app landing page, because there are several functions that the Nexus 7 doesn't do right out of the box that you will probably want it to do. For example, it has a 1.2 megapixel front-facing camera, which means that the camera sees you so that you could be, say, talking to somebody with Skype, but Unless you're using Skype, for example, or you want to take a screenshot, which I'm going to show you how to do in a, a later video, there's really no way to launch the camera, so you need to get an app for it. 
And that's what I'm going to bring you through right now. We are going to go back to my home screen and I've set these icons down on the bottom as kind of my main taskbar, if you will. The one with the shopping bag and the little Nexus pretty colorful little symbol on it is, this is Google Play, which is the app store for Android devices. And unlike the iPad, which has different icons for different stores, the app store, the music store, uh, I saw another one here, the bookstore, they all essentially take you to the same place, which is the iTunes store, but with Google Play, you just tap one icon and it brings you to one store where everything is sold. So in this case, we're looking for apps, so I would tap app and I want to search for a camera. So I'm going to tap on the little magnifying glass and you could type in the word camera, but I already did that because I set this up earlier. So I'm just going to tap on it and it will show you a list of apps that are cameras. In this case, the one called Camera Launcher for Nexus 7 is the one that I had read about that everybody recommended. So I already have it installed, but I just wanted to show you what the process would be. You tap on it, you go to this page where they talk about the details. On that page, you can see up to three reviews. For some reason or other, they only have three. But then if you scroll down to the bottom one, you will see See All, and that brings you to all the rest of the reviews. For some odd reason, I like to read a ton of reviews before I put even a free app on my device because I don't like to junk it up with a bunch of apps I'm not going to use. So I always read a bunch of reviews before I decide to get a free app. Um, there are a lot of reviews for many of these apps because a lot of people have Android phones. What I found is, unlike with the App Store at the iPad, not all the apps necessarily will work on the Nexus 7 or work well. So if you see there are these two little carrots, they bring you to additional filters that you can use for searching for apps. And in this case, the first carrot is the most important one, I think. You can check off the little box that says you want to see reviews from people who have an X7. And we tap OK. Now you can read reviews from people who actually have your same device. And as you can see, there aren't that many of them, but at least there's some. I found in a lot of cases there weren't any, in which case I just kind of had to guess. But in this case, there were, so I went ahead and installed the app. So to install it, you would press the little back button to get back to the main description of the app. And up here, instead of saying uninstall, it would say install. You tap on that. It will, the first time it will ask you your Google information so that you can sign in. But then after that, it will automatically just start downloading it. And then if you go back to the app landing page, after a couple minutes, that app will show up there. In that case, there is the camera. Now, what you do to get it to your home screen, and they do explain this in the book, but I, for whatever reason, I really wasn't picking up on it. You hold down with the app, and you drag it to one of your home screens. And I think it was the organization of the home screens that I had such problems with. So I want to start a second page. So this is my main home screen now, and because I already have the camera on there, I thought I would put one on the second page. And that's it. If you find out afterwards you don't want that app anymore, you can just drag it up. Usually it's up anyway. Toward the little X that says remove, and it deletes it from that page. Does not delete it from the device, however. There is another way to do that that I will cover in another video. But for now, that was pretty much all I wanted to talk about was how to unlock it, how to get an app, and the organizational structure of the app landing page versus your home page, which everybody refers to, but they never really explain what it is. So thanks for listening, and I will be, hopefully, if this all works out well, creating video number two very soon, and then you can, if you're interested, come and watch that one for my next tips. Thanks again. Bye-bye.